Welcome to dealing with materials data. In this course, we are going to learn about uh, analysis, uh, collection analysis and interpretation of uh, data using materials data sets as examples. And uh, specifically in these sessions, we are going to learn about using R to do uh, this. And uh, this is the second module. This is a module on descriptive statistics. And in this module, we are going to learn about presenting experimental results. And specifically, we are going to prepare rank and property based reports of experimental results. And so we are going to take some data sets and prepare these reports and we will learn how to prepare them and as well as how to report them. So that is what this session is going to be. Okay. As the first example, we are going to use the electrical conductivity of ETP copper. ETP copper is electrolytic tough pitch copper and it is very pure copper, it is commercially pure copper and it is used in many practical applications where its conductivity is very important. So typically in the industrial setting, the conductivity is measured using the eddy current method and uh, the, the units of the conductivity is given in percentage IACS. Uh, IACS stands for International Annealed Copper Standard. So with respect to this standard, what is the uh, conductivity that is measured in the sample? That is what is uh, given in this uh, conductivity measurements. And uh, so we are going to con uh, consider the data on uh, ETP copper conductivity. And these measurements were carried out by Dr. N. Harshavardhana and uh, these are reported in his uh, PhD thesis submitted to IIT Bombay. So we are going to use this data set and so this is one measurement, this is some 20 times he has measured in different parts of the sample and reported as the table. So that is the data that is given here. So using eddy current method and what is reported is percentage IACS. And uh, so 20 different measurements gives 101.4, 1.3, 101.3, 101.4 and so on and so forth. So this is the uh, raw data and uh, this is the most complete reporting of data, right. We have made 20 measurements and each of the measurement value is given and typically it is also given in the same order in which the measurement has been made. Right. So first measurement is 101.4, second measurement is 101.3, third measurement is 101.3 and so on and so forth. And if these are made on different parts of a sample and sometimes you can even give a schematic of the sample and locate where the first, second, third, etc. the measurements are made. These are all made on the same piece of uh, uh, copper. And uh, so the idea is to do these uh, measurements uh, to get the conductivity of the sample. Okay. And uh, as usual, we want to deal with this uh, data. So we want to store it as a CSV file and that is done. We have a file called ETP copper conductivity dot CSV and that is the file that we are going to use when we are going to do the R programming. So once the uh, data is given, of course the most complete is to just present the table and this table is actually there in Dr. Harshwadna's thesis, so he has even reported. But it is not possible to keep reporting numbers like this for every measurement that you make. Right? His thesis for example contains so many conductivity measurements and this is the first and only time where the complete measurement is given just to give an idea to the reader as to how these measurements are made, what the numbers look like. And when we report our means and standard deviations and so on and so forth later, uh, people can understand what is the type of data that we are dealing with. So that is the purpose. So it is always better to give the complete uh, report, all the numbers if possible. But many a times it is not practical. So you will see in Dr. Harshwadna's thesis that uh, apart from this, uh, there are not many places where the uh, repeated uh, measurements uh, values are given. Uh, and because it is not practical to keep giving numbers like this, uh, we are expected to do data reduction and report the reduced data 
But it is important then also to tell how the reduction itself has been carried out. So, you have to give the reduced data along with the methodology that you use to reduce the data. So, that is the uh, most common thing that is done in scientific reports, thesis, papers and so on and so forth. However, having said that the current standards are also changing. Uh, nowadays, uh, when you do a data reduction analysis and report the reduced data with the methodology, you are also expected to share the raw data that is the like the data that we saw in the table, the complete data along with the relevant codes and scripts etc. that you have used. Uh, this is typically given as a supplementary material and this is a good practice and as you will also see later uh, we are going to use some of these data that is there in the uh, open literature for carrying out our own analysis to understand some of these methodologies to learn about dealing with materials data. It also allows others to actually carry out the same analysis or if they have a different methodology then they can apply it to this data. So, it is very important to have uh, this uh, raw data available and so the, the most preferred current standard is not just do data reduction analysis and report the methodology, but also store the raw data at some place along with the scripts and codes used for the uh, reduction and make it available to everybody so that people can uh, independently uh, do the same analysis or if they need or want do a different analysis. And we will also show you some uh, papers uh, in the recent literature which do this uh, very well, um, which do a commendable job of reporting uh, this uh, raw data and uh, those should be the standards uh, we should aspire to. So, the first reduced data uh, is the stem and leaf plot and in fact stem and leaf plot has the same uh, amount of information as your uh, uh, table data except that there is still some modification that is done. It loses the information on the order in which the data was obtained. Uh, the stem and leaf plot as the name indicates gives the data in a tabular form and uh, it consists of a stem which is a left hand column and there are leaves from each of the stems. So, we will show for the conductivity data how this looks like. Uh, so, like I said even though it is a complete report of the results, it still misses the sequential information if any in the data. So, we are going to order the data uh, and, and then we are going to plot stem and leaf which means we are going to lose the information about the original order in which the data was obtained. Dart chart is another way of presenting results. Again, it is going to give the complete information, uh, but they are nice visual summaries of experimental data and they can be used to identify outliers and if you have more than one data set, they will also reveal the differences between uh, the different uh, data sets. So, we are going to see examples of both as we uh, go along in the course and the third uh, way of presenting data is to give cumulative distribution plots. Okay. Here again uh, we order the data in increasing values and we obtain the cumulative sum and we plot and there are several ways of doing cumulative distribution plots. You can use your own script or you can use inbuilt calls like ACDF or plot.ecdf and so on to get the cumulative distribution. And uh, you can also do uh, uh, slightly involved plotting in ggplot uh, which helps us uh, change the scale of the y axis in this cumulative distribution plots to probability scale uh, to know whether the data follows uh, um, the um, normal distribution or not. So, this might be important in some cases. Uh, we will see examples of that and uh, we will also, so, so the there is more involved analysis that one can do. This is just first step uh, changing the y axis to probability scale, uh, but, but we will do, we will see an example of how to do this. And uh, the next set of plots that we present are histograms and box and whisker plots. Okay. So, you can bin the data and uh, present histograms. So, in this range how many measurements uh, have shown up or in the next range how many measurements have shown up and so on and so forth. 
these histogram plots are very very important uh, especially if the distribution um, is not normal or is not what people expect or if you want to give explicit information about the distribution then histogram plots are important. Box and whisker plots also have similar information they indicate the distribution of the data and you can also use uh, commands like a quantile to get the spread of the data. And finally, uh, there are also property based reports that one has to make or one can make. Uh, these are mean, median and standard deviation variance and so on and so forth. And in these uh, tutorials, we will also see in addition to getting the property based reports, uh, how to combine the property uh, based reports along with the rank based reports. Uh, in a graphical uh, methodology. So, you, you, you plot them, you also put this information of the uh, property based reports on the same plots and that gives us better information about the data or, or help us understand the data better. So, we are going to do all this. So, this is a session on reporting rank and property based um, data. So, we are going to use the electrical conductivity of ETP copper as the example case for doing all this analysis. So, let us do that. Okay. So, first thing to do, so let us open R and let us read the data and make a stem and leaf plot. Well, it is very easy. So, we are going to read into x the data on ETP conductivity and so let us first do that. Okay. And then we are going to say uh, x, so this is the data. Okay. So, I am going to say x um, Okay, we are going to save in small x the conductivity data. Um, so, now if you say stem right x, you get this stem and leaf plot. As you can see the decimal point is one digit to the left of the pipe right. So, pipe is here. So, decimal point is here that we know. The data is all 101.3, 101.4, etc. So, 101.1, 101.2, 101.3, etc. And you can see that there is one data point 101.1, there are 3 101.2, there are 3, 6, 9 101.3, and 5 101.4, and 2 101.5. So, if you add them all up, there is total of 20 data points, right? 4, 9 plus 4, 13 and plus 5, 8, 18 plus 220. So, this is the stem and leaf plot and this is called the stem and this is called the leaf and you can also see sort of the distribution of the data, right. So, you can see how the data is distributed and it looks like a, a normal distribution at least looking at these numbers. So, this is the first one. So, get a stem and leaf plot, right. So, like I said, stem and leaf plot is complete in the sense that whatever 20 data points that we saw are all here, except that now they are ordered. This information that you know 17 measurement gave 101.4 and then 18 and 19 gave 101.3 and 20 gave 101.1, that information is missing here. The sequential information, if it is important, for example, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, is there some reason why if you make these measurements it will reduce like this? Uh, if, if there is any such information that is missing from the stem and leaf plot, otherwise it has all the data. So, it is complete in, in one sense that it has all the data uh, and it also by looking at it you can not only see how the data is distributed, you can also see which is the uh, you know most repeated uh, uh, number, the, the mode of the data, right. So, that you can see clearly. Now, let us do the uh, dot chart, right. So, dot chart uh, of x. Now, here is the dot chart 
and again 101, 101.2, 101.3 etc. So, you can see 2 data points here, 5 data points here, 9 data points here and 3 data points here and 1 data point here. Uh, the dot chart is also plotted in such a way that it tells you about the values uh, and 101.1 .1 is shown like this because it is sort of an outlier. And uh, dot charts are useful to identify uh, such outliers and uh, so we will see why this is an outlier, we will, we will see later. But at least uh, by looking at the dot chart, again dot chart also gives all the information, it only loses the information about the sequence of the measurements. But in addition it also sorts of, sort of shows you where the outliers are and in this case this happens to be the outlier. Okay. Uh, the next step is that, okay, so we have done the dot chart. Let us do the cumulative plot and this is how the cumulative plot is done. Okay. So, let us put it here. So, we are going to sort the conductivity and decreasing is false. So, it is going to be in the increasing order lowest to highest and we are going to get the cumulative sum as y of x and we are going to normalize. So, length of y will give you what is uh, the number of elements in that vector and so the last point of that uh, because it is a cumulative sum you know final sum will be the total and that we are going to divide by so that the values go from 0 to 1. And then we are going to plot uh, the x value and the sorted conductivity value with the cumulative sum, normalized cumulative sum. And the type is basically a, a step like uh, uh, plot and that is what type equal to s means. So, let us let us do this and look at. So, as you can see 101 these steps is what because we said type equal to s and this is the conductivity values and the cumulative sum of the conductivity values are here. Okay. So, this is, uh, this is the uh, CDF. There are other ways of uh, plotting this. For example, you can say plot dot ECDF that stands for empirical cumulative distribution function uh, I think. So, you can say um, ECDF. Okay, so sorry. Um, plot ECDF x dollar conductivity. Okay. So you can see uh, it is the same plot as we got, uh, uh, except that I mean the plotting style is slightly different, and it shows you uh, the the empirical cumulative distribution. Um, so, so you can look at help ECDF. E uh, so, it is empirical cumulative distribution function. So, that is what we got. There is another way of course, you can say plot and what should be plotted? We can say empirical cumulative distribution of conductivity, right. So, so again it is the same plot. So, either you can say plot dot ECDF or plot ECDF of this. Okay. So, there are 2, 3 different ways of doing it, but they all give you the same result namely that you have the uh, cumulative distribution plot from the data. Now, we want to use ggplot, we want to change this range, uh, this range to probability scale. So, obviously, we have to use library ggplot and scales and so let us do that. So, we, we invoke the library ggplot2, we invoke the library scales and as usual ggplot you have to tell the data, and we have to tell the aesthetics. So, conductivity is all that is there in the data. So, that is what we want to plot and we want to do the statistical analysis uh, namely cumulative distribution function and that is what we want to plot and uh, the, the scale of y uh, we want to transform to probability scale. 
and the probability scale if it is a normal distribution then how the data would look like and what does the actual data look like. Okay. So, that is what we want to compare and that is why we want to do this scale transformation. So, let us do this and you have this. And if this is a sort of like a straight line that indicates that uh, the data is having a normal distribution. But anyway, there is a warning message. So, so uh, transformation introduce infinite values in continuous y axis, uh, but uh, I do not think that is very important. Uh, but it is important to read and, and, uh, and pay attention to them. In this case, this is not important. Okay. So, as you can see uh, the scale is now uh, slightly different and uh, so it basically tells 25 percent of the data is here, 50 percent of the data is here and, uh, and 75 percent of the data is here and 100 percent data is here. So, it, it, it sort of gives you not just the data, but the distribution of the data. Uh, okay. Now, the next one we want to do is to do a histogram plot, right. So, let us do the histogram plot. So, we take uh, x and conductivity, of course, the x label is conductivity and uh, the title is uh, copper conductivity. And you can see the uh, histogram plots. Histogram plots ag again are very nice. So, you can see the distribution of the data. So, there are there is one data point 3, 9, 5 and 2 that we already know and so that is how the data is. Okay. So, this is a histogram plot. Now, the next one that we wanted to do is to do a box and whisker plot. Again, the command is very easy and as uh, we have been doing, it is it's easy to actually put help box plot for example and learn more about these commands. So, here is a box plot and the box plot again indicates uh, uh, where the data is, uh, where the um, uh, sort of median uh, data lies and, 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 and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, we can also do um, yes. So, what this has done is that it just flipped the, see the original box plot was like this and this 101.1 is an outlier as you can see here again and we can flip it to be horizontal. So, the uh, conductivity values are here and this means that uh, this box actually has the third and uh, second and third uh, quantile data and so, so this is the uh, median value and you can see that there is one data point which is uh, really lying outside. Uh, so, this is an outlier 101.1 is an outlier. We got an hint of this earlier too uh, from the dot plot and uh, we will we will see why that is so later. Okay. So, now let us also do this you can also say quantile uh, this is not a graphical representation, but it will give you the numbers. So, it says that uh, you know uh, 25 percent of the data is achieved at 101.3, 50 percent also at 101.3 and 75 percent of the data is actually 101.4 and 101.5. So, this is the, the quantile um, how much of data is in uh, which range. You can increase, so it gave you only 0. 25, uh, 50, 75, etc. So, you can you can decide that you want to have uh, more information than that um, by explicitly giving that. So, here we again want quantile, uh, but instead of the default uh, 0, 25 percent, etc., we want to go in uh, 10 percent. Um, so, 0, 10, 20, etc. So, you can get the quantile. So, this again gives you some information about the spread of the data. Okay. And these are all the rank based uh, ways of representing the data. Okay. 
So, let us now calculate the uh, summary uh, reports from property based uh, reports. So, yeah. so, so, the mean is let us call it mu and the median. So, you can get um, mean to be 1.31.32 uh, and median is 101.3. Okay. Now, you can get the uh, sigma which is a standard deviation and variance which is var. Okay. Let us do that. So, S d is for standard deviation and we are going to store it as sigma uh, mu is the mean sigma is the standard deviation and uh, this is uh, mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma is the 2 sigma range uh, about mu uh, and uh, the var is basically variance which is right. So, the variance is 0 0.01 and you can get uh, sigma which is 0 0.1. Okay. So, now let us do the uh, final thing, let us plot and let us also put this uh, uh, property based reports together with the. So, what we are going to do? We are going to plot the conductivity and we are going to start drawing lines at uh, the mean, at the median and mu plus sigma, mu minus sigma, mu plus 2 sigma, mu minus 2 sigma, etc. If you do that, you can see that okay, so here is the data and uh, the, the black line is basically the mean, the median is 101.3, so that is the red line and this is 1 sigma from the mean, so the, the, these data points are lying within 1 sigma. And if it is a normal distribution and we have been thinking that this is a normal distribution, you would expect that a large percentage of data, 99 percent of data should lie between uh, 2 sigma about the mean. So, and you can see that it falls, but there is one data point that lies just outside of the 2 sigma, right. So, this is the 2 sigma line mu minus 2 sigma that is why this is an outlier and this has been indicated in the dot chart and in the other uh, plots also. Not uh, so much in uh, um, uh, histogram plot, but in the, in the box plot we did see that this is an outlier. So, and here also we see why it is an outlier. So, this is another way of looking at the data. In this uh, we have both put the data uh, as well as the property based reports and uh, things like histograms and uh, cumulative distribution etc will be called uh, as uh, uh, rank based uh, representations. So, we have uh, taken a simple data set on conductivity and we have prepared both uh, rank based and uh, property based uh, reports and we have learnt how to present them using R. Um, so, we will continue with uh, some more uh, data which uh, can be a little bit more complicated than this uh, in the sessions to come. Thank you.